Sundarban, the only mangrove in the entire universe where the tiger prowls. Tiger, the Bengal tiger. Sundarban, the largest river delta in the world, is a mystic land in the true sense of the term. There are many theories regarding the origin of the name Sundarban. One cannot be certain, but the theory that sounds most reasonable is that it has got its name from one of the most primitive and ancient trees that thrive here, namely the Sundari tree. Sundaban is certainly not about the tigers alone. It's also about the people who live here, the creeks, the mystic mangrove trees, and also its majestic Asurian crocodiles. To enter Sundarban National Park, one has to take the permission of the forest department situated in the island of Shojnikali. As it is located in the heart of the forest, the watchtowers inside Shojnikali provide ample scope to the tourist for spotting wildlife. Batagu Baska or the river terrapin can be spotted in one of the artificial ponds at Shojnikali. They have been here now for more than two decades. The only place to find them apart from the zoo in Chennai in the whole world. Chital or spotted deer is the only species of deer that can be found now in Sundarban. Ever alert, ever cautious, ever in the fear of the lurking predator. Sundarban is an expansive paradise for bird lovers. Brahmini ducks, gadwals, northern pindils can be found in abundance here if one has a vigilant eye. Among the stalks, the lesser adjutant stalk can often be spotted by the river bank, prowling and looking for prey. Pond heron, common yet important. The intermediate egret can be found quite often and are not difficult to spot. In one of the ponds at Shojnekhali, you can see a group of estuarine crocodiles where they have been kept in captivity. Here, you have a rare chance of seeing them from very close by. This is perhaps the only place in the world where both the Hindus and the Muslims worship the same goddess, Bonbibi, the goddess of the forest. Bonbibi Pala, a jatra or the performance of a mythological folklore has now become a special interest for the tourists. The local drama troops, wearing costumes, singing and dancing in their unique way in Bonbibi Pala Depicting the tragic tale of the average Sundarban dweller's life is a must watch. The rustic performers travel across villages and rivers, walking over miles to perform in the resorts, just for a thousand rupees or so for the entire troupe. 
none of the groups has less than eight members. Now, all of us know that the best time to visit an Indian forest is post-winter or to be precise, summer. This is because of the heat and the lack of natural water deep inside the forest which gets mostly dried up and so the animals come out to drink from the artificial ponds dug out by the forest department. This, however, does not quite hold good in the case of the Sundarbans. This is because, be it winter or summer, at the time of high tide, almost 70% of the land goes under the water. Those white marks on the green mushroom-like mangrove trees are nothing but a flock of egrets, resting, now flying. A pair of ashy wood swallows having a time of their own. The Asian Paradise Flycatcher. It's a real treat to the eye. And now here is one of Shundurbun's pride, the black-capped kingfisher. Very beautiful and very typical of the mangroves. It's hard to get a snap as they are very agile and give you little time to take a shot. It's indeed a real beauty. Sixty-five percent of Sundarbans lies within the borders of Bangladesh. In the Indian part, the forest is divided into two districts, South and North 24 Parganas. The main tourist zone lies in the South 24 Parganas part. At Chhorkhali, a captive tiger park has currently got a pair of tiger inmates. Shohom, the male tiger is about 13 years old and Shohoni, the female, about a year younger. Unlike other Indian forests, in the Sundarban, we cannot literally go inside the forest to track the tiger because of the boggy terrain. So this Jharkhali Park provides a chance to the tourists to see the king of the jungle if they have missed spotting one during the jungle cruises. Sundarban is crisscrossed by a network of rivers Pidda, Gomar, Biddathuri, Matla, Ogol, Raimongol, Ushaba, and Kalindi are the major ones. Now, from South 24 Parganas, we move to the north to the Chingakhali beat of the Bushidhat range. High fences have been built to keep the tiger away from the forest office. Fishing is the major occupation of the local residents apart from honey collecting and these tiny boats known as dinghies are their only mode of transport. Unfortunately, they are often picked up by the Bengal tigers from these very boats. Now we are heading towards the furthermost point of the Indian Sundarban.
The black line of forest that we see on the far side is the Sundarban of Bangladesh. Shamshe Nagar, located in North 24 Parganas, in the northern fringes of the park, is notoriously reputed for being the village that suffers the maximum number of tiger attacks. There have been incidents where victims have been picked up by the tiger from the very courtyards of their own houses. The reason for this is that the channel of the river that separates the village from the forest is the narrowest here in the whole of Sundarban. We are now back to the South Division again. This is the Shudhanwakhali Watchtower. Let's see what it has to offer. A common bronze back, the poisonous fangs lie behind their jawlines, as a result of which, if it bites a human, it is never fatal. Shikra, a very important bird of prey, a ruthless hunter. And now, the red-crested piece of beauty on the other side is a laser flame back with peacock. The Bronze Rongo, another residential bird of Sundarban. The enigma, the magic and the mystery of Sundarban mostly lie in the equation of the high tides and the low tides. As already mentioned, during the high tide, 70% of the forest goes underwater and all of the wildlife gets into the deeper and higher regions of the forest. As soon as the low tides start and the water level begins to go down, they again get into their business. Thus, spotting wildlife in such a dense forest is most likely during the low tide. Let's see now a glimpse of the interesting game of the water level going up and coming down. The Water Monitor or the monitor lizard. The small version of the famous Commodore dragon found in Southeast Asia. These are prolific hunters with a sniffing tongue and a mouthful of bacteria. They are indeed lethal predators. The wild boars are one of the most favourite dishes of the Bengal tiger. With crooked tusks and a no-nonsense attitude, they are not as easy to hunt as the cheetals. Yet, the rough terrain and the scarcity of food have made the wild boars the king's favourite food. See how cautiously they move, taking a nimble step and minding everything around? The tiger may be nearby. We can also see a red jungle fowl lurking behind. Red tailed peat viper, deadly, venomous. Unlike the cobras, whose venom is neurotoxic and affects the nervous system. The viper's venom is hemotoxic in nature. It enters the blood and slowly kills the victim. This one has been spotted at Shudhan Nokali.
Even if one forgets about the wildlife, the mangrove and the tiger, Sundarban still holds a beauty of its own. The ever-changing color of the sky, the never-repeating forms of the clouds, the meandering rivers and their dusky banks make us forget that we are so close to one of the busiest and crowdiest cities of India, Kolkata. You can often question the presence of tigers as they are very hard to spot in Shundarvan. If you ask why, this is simply because here, unlike other forests, we are not entering but merely roaming around the forest circumference. So, the only chance of spotting a tiger is when it decides to cross the river or after having a meal, decides to drink water from the artificially created sweet water ponds near the watchtowers. And here, we can find a juvenile crocodile enjoying its sunbath. But even for once if you doubt the forest department's claim of having more than 100 tigers on the Indian side of Sundarban, these fresh bug marks will give you goosebumps. What can be more beautiful than a pair of Brahmini kites sitting on a tree and almost posing for your pictures? The brown-winged kingfisher is another exceedingly important species of the mangrove. The buffy fish owl is not a very commonly found bird in the Sundarbans. We are lucky enough to have captured it in its solemn and grave presence. The changeable hawk eagle is a fascinating bird of prey. It can also be spotted here though not very often. Collared kingfisher is another important member of the kingfisher family. They can be found in the surrounding villages of Sundarban as well. The rhesus macaque or the monkey that is often ignored amidst a host of other glamorous mammals is a very important part of the Sundarban food chain. Their alarm calls from the treetops are often quite helpful in spotting the tiger. But if you feed them with the food that you are carrying, they can be very mischievous and hard to tackle.
The monitor often rests upon the tree trunk and branches, keeping a track of everything around and also maintaining a perfect camouflage. Oops, it seems we have disturbed him. The tiniest of all kingfishers, the common one, sometimes gets very uncommon and becomes very hard to find. Luckily for us, we got him this time. This is the common manna, also found in our very own city, Kolkata. The common sandpiper is a frequent presence on the banks of the rivers. The mudskipper or the fish with wings is an integral part of the Sundarban fauna. This incredible species of fish are well adapted to their environment even when the tides go down. They haven't got any special breathing organ but as long as the banks are watery, they absorb oxygen through their skin and gills. Outside the water, they use their fins for locomotion on the mud. They feed mainly on insects and smaller fish. They are an interesting mangrove species indeed. Sometimes silence speaks louder than words. Let us just enjoy the white, green, mystifying hush of the jungle that Mother Nature has created. Let her speak for a change. The intimidating forest, the swamps and the creeks make us question our urbanism. Have we gone so far away from nature that we have to film it to appreciate it? We are reminded of Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Truly, we are. Wimbrel, commonly found in the muddy flats of Sundarban. People who visit Bharatpur say that grey herons are common birds. But here in the Sundarbans, they are not. We are lucky enough to have shot a pair with our lenses. Little cormorants are found here in Shudhanokhali, spreading their wings in a typical fashion. The Pacific Golden Clover is one of the most long distance traveling birds among all.
The Kentish plover, lucky to be spotted now, as they are found in the mangroves mostly in the winter. Osprey, a king amongst the birds of prey, fascinating to watch, a delight. Green bee eaters, common sandpipers, red shanks, and many more not so supposedly impressive birds provide immense support to the ecological balance and biodiversity of Sundarban. And now the crabs. They are perfectly thrilling to watch, particularly the crawling movements of the fiddler crab and the red, yellow and blue ones on the muddy ground of the great Sundarban. It's stupendous to say the least. You can go on watching them tirelessly for hours and never be bored. Dobaki, the most endearing walk on top of the mangroves, a canopy walk created by the forest department. It enables us to come close to the forest and feel its enchantment. It is a must walk for all Sundarban lovers. Pied Kingfisher. For some, 
They are the most beautiful of all kingfishers. Normally, they prefer to stay in the buffer zones or near the villages rather than inside the forest. Here, there is a pair. Perhaps the most common of all kingfishers is the white-throated one. They are found commonly nowadays in the urban ponds and swamps. Still, its color keeps you captivated. So, out of seven types of kingfishers, we have been lucky to spot six, missing only the ruddy kingfisher. Is Sundarban only about the tigers? How many tigers are still left here? How big is the forest? How far is it stretched? What is its area? What is the exact extent of the salinity of its rivers? These are questions you can easily find answers to from the internet through the Google. You can even learn from books and internet data about the man-animal conflict and the number of people killed by tigers each year. But the sheer delight of watching the birds roosting or flying, the rivers flowing, the crocs crawling and the snakes coiling is a bliss that cannot be attained through the internet, my friends. The flight of the egret, the movements of the collared dove, the raindrops on the muddy creeks and the birds returning home at dusk with the sun behind them have urged us to come and visit this forest again and again and fall in love with it. The birds, the river, the people, the creeks, the fish, the mud, the banks and the trees. Without them, the tiger cannot survive. They all form an encompassing circle and the tiger is a part of that very cycle. Sundarban thus and so is not about the tiger only. <laughs>